Hello guys and welcome back to sort of a pretty different video here on this channel. Now this is one of those videos that I don't really normally do, um, but I got this idea a while ago and I just figured, you know, why not make a video on it. Uh, first off, I just want to say sorry if I sound uh, a little bit sick. I do have, uh, you know, uh, like an allergy problem going on because uh, it is allergy season right now. So I'm sorry if you can tell that um, I am kind of sick, but... Uh, I do still want to make this video today, I'm, like, I'm not going to let that stop me from you know making this video, but um, yeah, today what we're going to be doing is seeing how Windows 10, you know, Microsoft's latest and greatest operating system will run on a Pentium 4 computer from 2001, you know, from the Windows XP era of computing. And this is a completely like off the wall idea that I just got uh, like um, a few weeks ago. I just want to see if this would work because this would be really cool um, if we can get Windows 10 to work on this really old computer. Um, and yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Uh, I'm just going to uh, reach over here and uh, you know power this thing on right now. Um, I will tell you uh, the system specifications of this. This is uh, a Dell Optiplex, or no, uh, a Dell D um, Dimension 8400, I believe. Um, I do have Windows 7 on it right now, uh, and you know, uh, Windows 7 was released like uh, around 2009. Uh, I, I, I believe it was in 2009. Um, but th this computer was designed for Windows XP, which was released in 2001. And it doesn't have the greatest specs. Like I said, it's uh, only a Pentium 4. Uh, it's uh, a single core processor. All right, so as I was saying, yeah, this is going to give us um, sort of a view on how Windows 10 will work on Windows XP era computers. As if you're not aware, um, I believe around this time last year, April 8th, 2014, was the day that Microsoft killed off support for Windows XP. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that are still using Windows XP machines for their businesses or for even their home computers. And this is going to give us a great, uh, you know, sort of pr perspective on how Windows 10 will run on these older machines. Now, I'm not saying it's going to run on every single XP machine. As, if, you know, from that era, there were uh, machines that were way uh, lower spec than a Pentium 4 that could run Windows XP. Um, this one here is probably uh, one of the higher ones, you know, uh, uh, one of the higher spec machines. Um, but I'm just going to be seeing, like, I I'm not even sure if Windows 10 will uh, even install on this thing. So, but I'm still going to put this video up either way so that we can see um, what kind of results that we get. Um, so I'm just going to go into the, the Windows control panel here. Sorry you can't uh, see the screen right now. I'm going to try to uh, focus that in. Uh, I don't have like a uh, capture card or anything like that, so I can't really, um, you know, uh, get any better view than this during the Windows 10 installation process. However, when Windows 10 does finish installing, or if it finishes installing, I'm going to try to uh, connect to the computer using a remote desktop, and I I'm going to see if we can, you know, use it that way. Hopefully, that'll uh, give us, you know, uh, like a better view of it. But anyway. Let's go into, uh, it's in system, I believe that is right. Actually, we can just do it this way. We'll go to computer properties. Um, so this is, let's just zoom in on this here so the camera will focus in. This computer, as I mentioned, is a Pentium 4 um, clocked at 3 gigahertz or 2.99 gigahertz for some reason Windows 7 sees it like that. Um, it has 2 gigs of RAM. And it is obviously a 32-bit operating system. Now, you know, Windows XP, from this time, 64-bit uh, operating systems were not really that popular. They did have a 64-bit version of Windows XP, but it wasn't released until later on, I believe a few years after Windows XP made its original release. Um, I probably should also mention that, that uh, th this computer does have Intel's hyper-threading technology, which basically allows Windows to see it um, as two cores uh, instead of one core, but physically it's only uh, a single core processor, um, but it's sort of having uh, a virtual second core, which basically uh, improves performance a lot uh, on this computer. Now, the minimum system requirements for Windows 10 is a 1 gigahertz or faster processor, 1 gig of RAM for the 32-bit, 2 gigs for the 64-bit, and 16 gigs of free hard drive space. So, 
really minimal system requirements not really that you know much i don't I mean i know that windows 8 I, I believe windows 8 was a lot you know demanding than these specifications were i know that i tried to uh, install windows 8 on this very same computer and it gave me a bunch of errors it crashed during the installation process um, it gave me some like bootloader error or something like that. I believe that was just Windows 8 being weird because it tends to do that, but it could have been this computer. Um, and if you're wondering what this computer looks like, let me just can just uh, zoom out here and show you. That's not zooming out. There we go. Um, it is, as I mentioned before, a Dell Dimension or Dimension. I don't know, I don't know how you say it. I think it's a Dell Dimension 8400. Um, if I'm saying that wrong, be sure to let me know down uh, in the comments. I would greatly, uh, you know, appreciate it. But, yeah, so that is what we are working with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into the Windows Insider website. So I'm going to log on uh, to Inter Internet Explorer here. We're going to go to insider.windows.com. Let's grab the keyboard here. All right, so we are now logged into the Windows Insider portal. And what we're going to do is go and download the Windows 10 uh, setup file, which I believe we just do right here. And we want to go, I believe we just get the preview, and we want to start upgrade now. So we're going to actually save this file, we'll save it to the desktop. And basically what this does is... Um, this file will download the latest version of Windows 10 directly from Microsoft and it will uh, install it to this computer. Now I did have uh, a burned ISO uh, to a uh, actual DVD but for some reason it wasn't working on this computer. I don't know why. I think it, maybe I, I didn't burn the DVD correctly but um, yeah so I'm just gonna try to uh, click on run here. Hopefully this will work out. So we're going to click on yes and so we're getting this little error message right here that says uh, that we ran into an installation error and yeah so maybe we don't meet the system re requirements which I thought that we did because it looks like that on the uh, insider site that we like have maybe it's because the hard drive we don't have enough space on the hard drive no we have plenty of space um I don't know I'm guessing we just don't have enough system requirements. I'm gonna try one more method. I'm going to I'm gonna put the DVD in the drive here, and uh, actually I'm gonna show you what happened before when I tried to uh, load the DVD. And yeah, so basically when we uh, when I ran this, it gave me some error message before, which is why I didn't really try to go with this method. But we'll just let it load in here. There we go. So let's run setup. We'll click yes. And yeah, we get this right here. D sources. Uh, something that DLL is either not designed to run on Windows or contains an error. Try to install the program again using additional installation media to contact your system administrator or software vendors for support. Uh, so, yeah, we can go. Let's go to. Let's try to explore this. How do you do that again? There we go. Let's try maybe set up. I think I ran set up before. Yeah, it keeps crashing on the installation for some reason. I'm guessing that's... Alright, so I'll tell you what. We'll try one last thing. We'll go to restart. And we will see if we can get this thing to boot uh, directly from the DVD and if that's going to make it. It's, I, see, I don't even know if that would work or not. I believe it's F12 for the boot menu. Let me just make sure. Yeah, it's F12. So we're going to go to... Let's see here. We want onboard CD-ROM. So you can see the screen. I'll be uh, adjusting it. And yes, we want to boot from the CD. Okay, we got a blinking cursor up there. Uh, we hear the drive spinning up. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Hopefully it will. <laughs> And yeah, like I said, I didn't test any of this. 
Uh, I did see a different video of a few people trying to do it on uh, Pentium 4 and it worked. I'm guessing they had like a better spec Pentium 4 than this one. Um, but yeah, we're just at a blinking cursor right now. I'm not. I'm, I'm just gonna let the drive finish spinning up and see what it's what it's gonna do. So yeah, there we go. We got a little error message right there. Uh, your PC needs to restart. Please hold down the power button. We got some error codes. Um, after reading a little bit more on the Insider site, it apparently says that, let's just read this here, some PC processors and hardware configurations are not supported by the technical preview, including a small number of older 64-bit CPUs, some 32GB and 64GB devices running a compressed operating system. It doesn't mention anything about 32-bit CPUs, um, and I'm, I'm guessing it's just because this is a Pentium 4. I'm not really... I mean, I can look up that error code. Let me just... Yep, CPU is not compatible. That, that's what that first error code is right there. Well, yeah, guys, I guess that's going to end this video off. Sort of uh, an anti-climatic ending here because we can't get this thing to boot. Um, I was kind of hoping it would. Um, but, yeah, this gives us a great uh, sort of, you know, uh, perspective on what this is going to look like on Pentium 4 devices. Um, again, I did see a few videos of some people uh, that actually got uh, Windows 10 to run on their Pentium 4, um, but I'm guessing they had a, you know a newer Pentium 4 or a, a better spec Pentium 4. This one, you know, it was just too old. I'm guessing. So yeah, that's that's basically why um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna have to end this video off here. So. So yeah, guys, you know, thanks for watching, uh, thanks for tuning into this video. I know this isn't really the normal thing that we do on this channel, but like I said, I just got this idea, um, a f you know, a few weeks ago, and I just figured it would be cool uh, to make this video, and I think it would be cool if uh, I did more videos like this. I don't normally, um, you know, do, you know, random off-the-wall videos like this, but um, if this uh, does well and uh, if you guys like it, then yeah, I will definitely uh, do more videos like this. Um, and yeah, definitely be sure to, to drop me a comment down below, uh, you know, if you enjoyed this video and uh, if you would like to see more of that. Um, I am planning on uh, releasing a uh, Windows tutorial next week, um, as there has been one particular version that has been uh, suggested multiple times by all of you guys, so... Um, be looking forward to that. That's probably going to be coming out uh, sometime next week. And yeah, guys, just as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on this channel. And yeah, guys, uh, as always, I will see you in the next video.